Tooth decay is the number one reason people visit dentist. It's true, it's quite usual that people have toothache and go to the dentist and it'll be like <laughs> Oh, another tooth cavity. Oh, hold on. Do you know what's the reason for tooth cavity? Yup, sugar or sweet food. We have been told since young that sugar will destroy our teeth if we eat too much of it or if we do not brush our teeth properly, right? But do you know how did scientists find out that sugar is the main cause of tooth decay? You may be surprised if I tell you the place in which the experiment was carried out. I'm Dr Khan, dentist from Malaysia. This is not a video about the science of tooth decay, it's about a tragic experiment that discovered the real cause of tooth decay and it was carried out in a mental hospital. Dental caries or tooth decay has been haunting humanity since 40,000 BC based on what we see in Neanderthal skulls. Around 400 BC to 13th century, people thought toothworms caused cavities. Who are these people? Hippocrates, Agathocrates, Guy de Chauliac, and other smart deep thinkers. Aristotle came up with the theory that sweet food can cause tooth decay. I really don't know how did he figure that out at that time, where we took about 2,000 years later to prove he was right. Until 18th centuries, people thought toothworm theories didn't make sense because, well, they didn't find worms in the cavity. Few scientists such as Pierre Fauchard, John Hunter, and Joseph Fox believed that tooth decay resulted from an imbalance of internal force within the tooth. They're going a bit off track. In 19th century, the researchers started looking at external factors that caused tooth decay. Gastric juice was one of the suspected culprits. Hmm. Dr. G. V. Black, a great dentist and a scientist, discovered that caries was caused by fermentation of food particles leading to acid production that initiate tooth decay. However, until 1938, the cause of tooth decay was still unknown. Many were suspecting too much carbohydrate intake, lacking of vitamin intake, and other bull****. Meanwhile, Sweden was facing a horrendous dental crisis. How bad was it? Mm. The three-year-old children there had cavities in more than 80% of their teeth. That's crazily high. The problem was, no one knew how to prevent tooth decay yet because no one knew the exact cause of tooth decay. In 1939, to tackle this pressing issue, the Swedish Parliament commissioned a study to discover the true cause of tooth decay and ways to prevent it. To get accurate and useful result, they decided that the study required testing on human subjects. And so the study was targeted on hospital patients in Sweden, the Viberholm Hospital. Viperholm Hospital, once described as an institute for the mentally deficient people. This is where the causes of tooth decay unveiled in an unfortunate way. The settings of the experiment already presented two major problems. If done today, this experiment wouldn't even get approval from the authority. First of all, the patients in the hospital were chosen as the subjects without proper consent. I mean, some of the patients couldn't even dress themselves. We can expect they wouldn't know what they would go through in the experiment, right? Secondly, the study was funded by the government as well as chocolate and sweet manufacturers. And that can be a problem. It seems wrong to get candies factories to sponsor a study about sugar as there will be conflict of interest. And we will see why later. The study was carried out in three phases. Vitamin trials, carbohydrate 1, carbohydrate 2 involving 436 subjects. In the vitamin trials, the subjects were fed with certain supplements like vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D, calcium, and fluoride, routinely. To the investigators' dismay, no correlation was found between supplements and tooth decay. So, the researchers then proceeded with the next phase, the carbohydrate study. And it was said that they did so without seeking approval from the government, and certainly, no consent was taken from the subjects as well. 
In this carbohydrate study, the subjects were divided into seven groups. Control group with normal diet. Sucrose group, subjects were fed with a lot of sugar solution. Bread group, chocolate group, caramel group. Eight toffee group, subjects were instructed to eat eight toffees a day. 24 toffee groups, yes, 24 toffees a day. The carbohydrate study was divided into two phases. Carbohydrate study one lasted from 1947 to 1949, and carbohydrate study two lasted from 1949 to 1951. In brief, the subjects in carbohydrate study one were given an excessive amount of carbohydrate in their diet, while the subjects in carbohydrate study two were given similar daily amount of sugar consumed by the normal people outside of the hospital. You can guess how the result would be like when people were fed with so much of sugar. Let's put the result into a graph showing the number of teeth affected by decay versus the time period, which are the vitamin trial, carbohydrate study 1, and carbohydrate study 2. The seven groups may start with different decay frequency because not everyone will have the same dental health. The control group who took normal diet has slight increase, but not significant. I mean, normal people like us would also get new decay in the next few years if we do not take care of our teeth now, right? For the bread, sucrose, and chocolate groups, they were quite similar to the control group, although slightly more increase was seen in the later part of chocolate group. For the caramel, 8 toffee and 24 toffee groups, the result was staggering. Not long after the study started, an obvious increase in decay frequency was observed. The increase was really huge. If we align the starting point of each group, we can see much clearly the differences. In fact, the researchers had to stop the later part of the experiment for the caribou and 24 toffee groups to avoid more destruction of the subject's teeth. The study's conclusions were very clear. Sugar played a significant role in tooth decay development. For dentists and researchers, it was a breakthrough moment. However, for the subjects in Vibram Hospital, it was a tragic ordeal. Before I proceed, if you like this video, do give us a like and subscribe to our channel so that I can create more interesting content like this one. Do follow us in Instagram and Facebook to improve your knowledge in taking care of your teeth. You can also visit our websites and enroll on oral health courses for free where you'll be learning about various ways to take care of your teeth, your gums and other structures in your mouth. Without talking too much, let's continue. After its completion, the result were crystal clear. Sugar, especially in sticky form and consumed frequently, significantly increased the chance of tooth decay. But did this groundbreaking study see the light of the day immediately? Unfortunately, despite the study's conclusion in 1951, it remained unpublished until 1954. Why was that? I can't seem to find the real reason, but people think that the sugar industry which has sponsored the study might have get involved. Of course, the candies factory's bosses would not be thrilled by the result that would discourage people from eating sweets. What about the subjects in Viper Home? Few sources mention that most of them didn't receive dental treatment for their broken teeth after the experiment. Many were incomprehensible or too restless for proper treatment. On the other hand, a researcher of that time claimed that it wasn't that bad. Any of the new cavities which developed during carbohydrate periods were only early enamel lesion and said that they were reversible if given fluoride therapy. However, there was no evidence that this treatment were administered, leaving us to ponder the pain and difficulties these individuals endured in their daily lives. After the groundbreaking Viperhome study, the researchers made significant discovery about the cause of tooth decay. It all comes down to the mouth bacteria, mutant streptococci. These bacteria, naturally present in our mouth, feed on sugar and produce acid which erode our teeth, leading to tooth decay. We can question the necessity of carrying out the human experiments like that. If this was carried out today, it will be all over the internet before the authority could do something about it. According to one investigator in the Viperum study, 
he felt it was necessary. He said, The need for the study was obvious to us as dentists. We encountered patients with serious caries problem in preschool children. So maybe the urgency at that time with rampant tooth decay and its costly consequences drove the need for such study. One of the practical results of the study was the recommendation that it was better for children to eat sweets once a week. All you want to eat, but only once a week. This practice established itself in the Swedish society. And still today, many parents only allow their children to eat sweets on Saturday, known as Lordak's goodies or Saturday candy. That's it. Hope you find the information helpful. The key message is sugar can cause tooth decay. And it is not limited to just sweets or white sugar. Carbohydrates, processed food that contains flour or refined sugar, chocolates, candies also belongs to this group of sugar that can cause cavities. Therefore, beware of the food that you eat. Limit the amount and the number of times you're eating this sugar because the more frequent you eat, the more acid attack that will destroy your teeth. Finally, don't forget to brush your teeth with fluoridated toothpaste. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a nice day and see you again.